We've just finished the fourth Sydney Utilities Forum, and I've got to say, it was the best one that I've been to. You know, what did you think about the forum itself? And how did they come to be? Well, I thought it was excellent. I think um, seeing all those organisations come together, yeah. and, and just the openness, the sharing, um, the fact that a lot of them went, all of them weren't perfect. Yeah. Um, they all had common issues, the same issues, but what was a revelation for one, um, was one which another one I've been working on for quite a while, and I think that was the sweet spot. The fact that you can sit in a room with your peers and openly share in a trusting environment, um, and it's just got better and better each year. Yeah, I think that was the thing that struck me, was how common the, the, the issues are across the world, and the, and the solutions for that matter. A lot of people doing some really great work in there, but this year for me, the, the layout and the format seemed to, seemed to be you know a step up again from the previous three years. Would you agree with that? Oh, totally. I think the fact that, um, that they all came together um, and the whole thing was centred around discussion and engagement. So uh, we did the ANCAP crash test the day before, yeah. and my goodness, yeah. um, there is nothing like watching a, a, a vehicle smash into a wall. Yeah. Even though you know it's coming, your adrenaline, 64 k's now, bang. Yeah. Um, and then having the engagement with James Goodwin afterwards, they can really ask the question, understand the science of the car. And I think all that networking beforehand and then the dinner, yeah. um, then led us into a fantastic environment where everyone knew everyone and was comfortable sharing. Yeah, yeah, I, I've got to agree with you. I mean, I've never been to a crash test as most of us hadn't. And when all of the professionals were up on that gantry and that vehicle hit the, 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 the bollard or the, the, the mass simulator, whatever you want to call it, that collective breath that everybody- the bang. Bang, yeah, and everybody was, ah, you know, it was, it was, it was quite something, but it, but it was, you know, something that really set it up for the year, wasn't it? it and I, I like that comment, um, which, which one of the partners made um, just recently around how the silence afterwards, yeah. in reality, that's the silence of death. It's yes. a crash. Yeah, you like I thought right. that was just a powerful it's pretty profound. description, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. So where did, where did the Utilities Forum actually come from? You know, how, how, What's the genesis of the NRSPP and, and how did the Utilities Forum fit in? Well, the, the NRSPP, it's really just a, a centre of excellence for collaboration, open sharing of, yeah. of workplace road safety. Because like, like you said, all the, common, all the, all the organisations have the same issues. It's the common thing that pops up. But a lot of them just don't share. They're so busy in their own little world. Um, they don't think around it. Well, what's everyone else doing around it? And so it really came out from the National Transport Commission around, well, um, let's get everyone to share the responsibility. Let's get the workplaces, the organisations, all those. Sort of, let's get them all to work together and, and put it out there. Because yeah. um, really, it's not around a competitive advantage. It's a shared advantage. Um, and that, that's really where it came from. It's supporting the National Road Safety Strategy. Um, it's focusing on the workplace, uh, and because two thirds of fatalities involve a vehicle yeah, in the workplace. Absolutely, yeah. So the only way you're going to do that is by collaboratively working together. Yeah. Um, the utilities forum, that, where that really came out, was, it was quite unique because we were doing a project looking at benchmarking, mm -hmm. and and um, it was an NRMA ACT road safety trust project. And when we were doing these workshops around the place, we actually had a large number of utility companies came along. Yeah. And what was incredible, each one they sat next to each other and they go, you know. We've never done this. Even though we yeah. operate in the same city, we're in the same sector, we don't sit across from each other and say, this is our problem, this is how. It, and, the, and trying to get them to focus on, this is the measures we want was hard because they're so busy talking around their problems. <laughs> yeah. And we did that each, each of the, and then when we came over to Perth, yeah. um, we had Water Corp, Shane Sharples, he same thing, he sat there and he went and finished, he goes, Jerome, can you do this nationally? Yeah, yeah. And I went, all right, that's a good challenge. And I took it up. The next minute, I was engaging with David Symes mm. at SA Water, yeah. uh, sorry, SA Power Networks, I should say. I was dealing with David Simon at SA Power Networks, and it all just came together rather seamlessly. APA Group stepped up straight away. Telstra came on board. Um, we had this great little sync group, and that helped sort of got Origin Energy, yeah. um, and then they just powered it together. Absolutely, and I remember that first year. You know, and that was a real eye opener for me because I'd never seen so many industry. Um, so, so many organisations in the same industry get together to discuss those those issues, you know, and that understanding that they're all the same. So that was that was in Adelaide. The first was in Adelaide. The following year, that uh, the the Telstra forum then moved to, to Melbourne. Yep. Back to Perth for twenty seventeen, and we've just wrapped up in Sydney again at uh, twenty eighteen. So and APA Group, um, mm. they host the current one. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, they stepped up. We had, we had one of the. the top leaders come in um, and she just painted a magnificent yes. journey. And for those of you who don't know about APA Group, they manage um, gas pipelines and sort of run a lot of them all throughout the country. 
So their guys are really, their, their workforce is hugely exposed, but it comes from the top, they lead from the top, um, and they've gone right back to basics. Yeah. And I guess and the point they made is their, their journey started four years ago with the first forum and they've built on it each year. Yeah. And that's what one of the things, just through the sharing and, and working collaboratively with their part, other part peers. Yeah, I think that's one of the takeaways, isn't it? That continuity, for instance, in 2017, we covered off um, Carmel Harrington came and talked about sleep, um, you know, the issues of sleep and fatigue. But in 2018, that became part of the the pre-dinner, the, the day before. And again, could, could perhaps we just sort of cover off a little bit about our, our speakers on the day as well. Yeah, and, and that's the thing, is when you had two, so we had Professor Anne Williamson yeah. um, and Dr. Carmel Harrington, and yeah. two very different sort of lenses, um, fatigue and sleep, talking about those, and, and then the naturalistic driving study that's been taking place up in New South Wales. And, and they just bounce off each other beautifully around yeah. a, a common sort of problem and different sort of lenses to how to manage it. Yeah. Um, and always, I, I think one of the key things is you fatigue, but really if your workforce isn't well rested beforehand, you're, you're pushing things uphill. That's quite right. I, I recall a few days beforehand just listening, I think, to one of the radio stations and, and there was Anne being interviewed on the radio and I, at the time, had no idea that she was the guest speaker for the dinner at the event, so that that was an absolute bonus, there's no doubt about it. So that was a great warm up day for for the forum itself. But when we got there the, the following day, the 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 conversation, the networking was just exceptional. It was effortless. It was, wasn't it? Yeah. I sit there thinking, geez, how how are we going to keep them on target? But that wasn't our our goal was for them to engage, to yeah. discuss, and and to, to be, and and we had one of the things that came out of it. We had, I think we've got what ten or fifteen Q and A's, which we're, we're yes. looking at developing over the coming sort of year. Um, lots of topics which is fed into the NRCP, and and I, and I can guarantee that if that's a problem um, for these organisations, it's a problem for a lot of others. But then Absolutely. there's also the positive side. Um, when you think about Telstra, Telstra's identified two hundred of their best drivers. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And and. Instead of thinking about well, what's, what's a bad driver look like, the thing that came out was what are the traits of a great driver? Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden Telstra's going to explore that and hopefully we can, we can share what they've found. Yeah. I think that was one of the keys, wasn't it? You know, we talk a lot about issues, but a lot of people shared a lot of solutions, a lot of wins as well. Um, I thought Chris Dew's presentation in the afternoon from Essential Energy on Mass and, and Payload was a real insight. And, we know that that's been really topical. Um, it seems to be getting more momentum as we go along, but I, I thought his insight as an operating fleet manager was outstanding. What was your highlight of the day, do you think? What were the biggest takeaways for you? Um, just just hearing people sit there just going, oh my God, I wish I'd known that earlier. Yeah. Oh, geez, uh, or, or that is such a great point. Thank you so much, and then building on it. Um, Chris is what was, was a fantastic sort of standout, mm -hmm. I think. Um, just putting it out there, saying this is the problem, this is how we've done it, how we've worked through it, and all of a sudden the other, all the other peers going, I hadn't even thought of it through that sort of lens. Yeah. Um, and there was so many of those moments where you could watch the different sort of partners in the room, and they were all so honest. Yes. Um, the yeah. fact that we were fa functioning under Chatham House rules, I think, gave yes. it all the power. Yeah, quite right. Um, and that, all of them just keep coming back, the whole idea of the safer vehicle. Yeah. Um, yeah. The argument of. How do we get our workforce in the safest vehicle loaded at the safe uh, at, at the right sort of level and how do we empower our workers yeah. to make informed decisions such that if we are told we can pull over if we have and how do we protect them in that sort of sense because yeah. they're out they're out in, in an open environment we don't have those controls mm. um, we have to have trust that we've got the right people and that's what kept coming through how do we get the right people in the door first and then build them up yeah and speaking of the right people there were a few changes this year um, there were two organizations that came from outside the the usual utilities group, I, I guess, in terms of, of Nestle and Eco Labs. I mean, that that was that was terrific in terms of getting their input, and for them being able to observe what's happening in the utility sector. What do you think will happen in twenty nineteen? How do how do you think that's going to expand? It's going to be rather, rather interesting to see where this sort of goes because I think getting them in there, they yeah. they got so much out of it. So did the peers, but they also have a lot of similarities in some of their, their commercial fleet that they yes. utilise, um, and it. it I have no idea where it's going to go. It's always fascinating to see how things evolve. My job is just a facilitation, let it be directed by the partners and, and, yeah. and the leadership that, that pushes it all forward. Um, but I, I like one thing's come out, so Nestle is going to be doing a case study um, talking around their whole mobile phone journey. I yeah. think the points that, um, that Luke really drew on around how they've got buy-in among their workforce mm. is probably one of the sweet spots um, on the day as well is, is to how do you get the hearts and minds of people on board? Because just telling them, don't do it, doesn't work, especially yeah. with Aussies. Right. 
Um, whereas he said this is how he translated it to his workforce and the higher risk group. Yeah. So keep an eye out for that case study. Yeah. And in terms of feedback, participant feedback, I mean, it was positive. I, I know that. But, you know, was there anything in particular that, that people did want or, you know, that really enjoyed on the day that uh, perhaps they want to continue with? Well, I think the, the key thing was discussion. Yeah. They really wanted that safe environment where they can discuss. And they even came back and said, you'd always think the lead lag indicators would be something that's essential. Yeah. Yeah. The feedback that came in going is, we don't really care about that. Um, we want to know more around the systems and getting those right sort of systems in place because if we get that all working well, those things will naturally fix themselves. Yeah. Um, and that, to me, was a, a real, that's a shift in maturity of, of those in the room. Yeah, yeah. And, and a lot of work had been put into to the data that had been collected over four years and, and how precious it was to keep that continuity. So even though perhaps some of the elements... I think one of the takeaways for me was was how easy it was to facilitate on the day, and and the reason for that was that everybody was so giving in that discussion, you know, and it's built each year. It seems to have got better and better. What are we going to do in twenty nineteen to beat this? That's that's actually one of the things I've been really pondering because I think one of the key things we try and do is keep it small. So it's invitation, they they come along, um, and we've got to keep it. It's never going to grow above sort of uh, 20 organisations. Yeah. Um, that's one of the guiding principles of first in best stress, uh, beyond that sort of core mm. groups. Mm. Uh, I think. And what do we do next? Uh, I, I think actually drawing a little more, seeing some of the safety um, features of the vehicle, actually yeah. maybe seeing the loading and, and walking around and seeing them could be quite useful yeah. for yeah. them. Yeah. Having a discussion with some of the manufacturers. Mm. Um, that. I believe that that's one of your, your ideas you threw out there for me there, Tim. Well, we might do that, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I, I think there's, there's so much scope and so much opportunity because, you know, we're all going to be dealing with operational matters for, for years and years to come. And the most important thing there is about keeping people safe. So I don't think we'll ever run out of ideas. No, and, and it's the same common threads keep coming through. Yeah. You, you, it's like you hear about the fatigue angle, the drugs and alcohol, speed. Yeah. Um, they're all sort of very fr front in mind, um, getting the right sort of vehicles with the mass loading, uh, and and then obviously the regulation um, is, is always sitting out there, and you're yeah. with them, especially when they go over borders. So how that all pieces together, um, I, I guess it's going to be interesting to see where we go for next year. So we've got our work cut out for us. We've got planning to do for 2019. We'd obviously encourage uh, partners and uh, anybody out there that's that's watching this video or involved in fleet to, to let us know, you know, what they think is of benefit. So we've got to get started. I agree, and it, it's only as good as what the partners put in. And, and I'm, I'll say, look, partners are throwing a lot in, yeah. and um, it's a low cost way. But look, if every organisation is having similar approaches to safety, the whole sector benefits. So yeah. it's, it's a bit of a no-brainer and actually getting involved. Yeah, it's been fantastic to do it this year. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure, Tim. You're welcome.